Let's now look at a fully detailed smooth chart. And I will start by highlighting some of the main impedance points and the main impedance circles on the Smith chart. So at the very center is uh, gamma equals to zero or the load impedance is equal to 50 ohms, typically a great point to be because it means the RF circuit is matched. The rightmost point is the open point and the leftmost point is the RF short point where the load impedance is equal to zero. Okay, so now the uh, outer circle of the Smith chart is where little r is equal to zero, where remember little r is the uh, real part of the normalized impedance ZL. And the, this circle here is where r is equal to 0.5 or big R is equal to 25 ohms. This circle here is where little r is equal to one or big R is equal to 50 ohms. And this is the little r equals two circle. Okay, now let me draw some of the constant x circles where little x is the imaginary part of the normalized load impedance ZL. So this is the x equals to 0.5 circle. And of course, I'm only drawing the part of the circle that is contained within the Smith chart. This is the x equals one circle. And this is the x equals plus two circle. Now we're on the um, capacitive side of the Smith chart. So this is the X equals to minus 0.5 circle and big X would be uh, minus 25 J in that case. That was the X equals minus one circle and this is the X equals minus two circle. Okay, now let me highlight some of the regions of the Smith chart. So the top half of the Smith chart is the inductive uh, half where little x or big X is um, are positive. The bottom half of the Smith chart is the capacitive half where x is negative. Now roughly the region, this region here to the left of the Smith chart is the, is the low impedance region because both X and R are relatively small in this region. Now this region to the right of the Smith chart is the high impedance region because X and R are relatively large and we're close to the open point on the Smith chart. The line through the center of the Smith chart is where X is equal to zero and the impedance is purely real. Now let's take a look at the scales at the bottom of the Smith chart. Go ahead and zoom in on them so that we can clearly see what each of them represents. So all these scales can really be used as a ruler to measure the length or the magnitude of the um, um, reflection coefficient gamma. So let's look at the left set of scales first. This scale that I'm highlighting here is the magnitude of the reflection coefficient. This one is the uh, equivalent um, power reflection coefficient, which is the magnitude of gamma squared. And the corresponding return loss expressed in dB is the second scale from the top. OK, 
Okay, and the top one is the VSWR scale, which is um, the ratio, the amplitude ratio of the crest to the trough of the standing wave on the transmission line. Now moving over to the right, um, let's look at, well, I'll just highlight a couple of the scales. Uh, that one there is the transmission coefficient uh, scale which is the equivalent power that's transmitted to the load. And the corresponding reflection loss is that scale there, which is the 10 log of the trend power transmission coefficient. Actually, since it's a loss, it's actually the minus 10 log. And also, I notice a couple of mistakes. So, um, return loss is minus 20 log of gamma, not gamma squared. And the VSWR is 1 plus gamma divided by 1 minus gamma. Sorry about that. So, Finally, I just want to quickly point out one of the great uses of the Smith chart, which is to help design a matching network. And what is a matching network? Well, a matching network uh, converts some load impedance, ZL, to um, the desired input impedance, which is typically 50 ohms. So let's say that we have a load impedance uh, in this part of the Smith chart, uh, designated by gamma L. The job of the, of the matching network is to move that load impedance to the very center of the Smith chart, where gamma is equal to zero, or nearly zero.